The Creator 2023, John David Washington, Ken Watanabe, Sturgill Simpson, Allison Janney, Gemma Chan. Beautiful movie to look at. Uh, great world building. Little bloated, little over long. It, it couldn't shake the feeling that I had seen it done before and seen it done better. I'm going to have to give that a two out of five. I'm sorry to say. I can't stress enough, though. It looks, it looks really nice. It's a nice looking movie. I thought about a two and a half, but to be honest, I felt like a two and a half is kind of like the coward's review. It's like, I didn't like it, but I'm not putting a hit out on it. Two is like the first bad review that is like, I'm not saying like, if you should watch it if you're a fan of the genre. I feel like the most courageous review scores are two out of five and five out of five. It's so easy to just give a movie a two and a half and say like, it's kind of okay. And it's so easy to give a movie a four and a half and say, um, it's great, but I don't want to defend it as the greatest movie of the year. 1999, 260 million views. Oh, this is Waiting for Tonight by Jennifer Lopez. No, okay, it's not. This is boom, 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 boom. Or we like to, this is we like to party. Maybe it's boom, boom, boom. It is not boom, 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 boom. We try again. Ooh. Ah, do you think you're better off alone? Oh, it too, baby. Or as we said in Canada, do you think you really want a clone? No way. Do you think you really want a clone? <clears throat> what was that for? Um, there was an advertisement for a company that instead of buying a PC, you could rent a PC for like a dollar a day. And then the, um, the gimmick was like it was a real name brand PC. It wasn't like a piece of garbage, I guess. So it would be like, do you think you really want a clone instead of do you think you really want a loan? Or better off alone, I should say. Why buy a no-name computer clone when you can get a genuine IBM for only nine ninety nine or a buck a day? It's true, just a buck a day. <laughs> Yo, KK Slider went crazy on the Kiko Quays today. I didn't know they had another like uh, preset for the vocals. I thought it was always going to be like some kind of MIDI clarinet. I want to smoke the shit that made Alice DJ. How was the Peloton ride? It was good. I did, um, I don't know, like 107 minutes in zone two watching the creator from Gareth Edwards. It was supposed to be 120, but then I got, uh, there were pressing matters that required my attention. I've been, why did we stop a run here? I don't remember. I've been getting my ass beat though. Win streak minus two. You know how embarrassing that is? When my goat is washed, I'm feeling like Dave Chappelle's new Netflix special. Oh, why don't you watch it before you say that shit? I did watch it. I watched the whole thing, bro. Why? Because I'm a millennial, so it's hard for me. I mean, like if Michael Jordan came back to play like a one game in the NBA every nine months, you're telling me you wouldn't watch that shit? You're like, come on, I know he's washed, but maybe he's not. Maybe he's over it. And then, you know, like 20 minutes in, you're like, nah, he ain't coming back, bro. A few chuckles, but not worth the hour. I mean, I, I have respect for Dave Chappelle as um, a very, a, a dedicated stand-up comedian who obviously has commitment to his craft. Uh, but I think that especially as time has gone on, He's become so self-indulgent 
as like the comedians or the modern day philosophers sort of like insanity um like we're supposed to be like truth tellers that make society face uncomfortable facts about itself and i'm like brother i don't know if you got the sauce for that <laughs> i think because <laughs> you just keep telling the same thing that you feel is your truth over and over and i think even the people who who like dave Chappelle are like we get it man like we we got it you got an axe to grind with the trans community but like at some point surely even the people who like agree with you are like can we move on to something else i hope i hope it's like that at least it's it sucks too because he's like an incredible storyteller like he's mastered the art of of building a story and then yanking the rug and then rebuilding it with like a a, a message at the end of it but it's just the the actual content of the story is not there anymore it's just gone anyway hi tomo i see you there i see i see you i see you baby shaking that paw Wait, 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 Oh! I should have waited. I should have waited like three seconds. He would have been laying down. Nothing can move the sedentary cat. Instead, I gave him a little bit of attention, and now he's he's up at my ankles. Hi, hi yeah, and a, and a good meow to you as well, good sir. I did see that Christopher Nolan's uh, favorite Peloton instructor did roast one of his movies. They said, and I quote, that's two hours of my life, I won't get back. Um, I was on my Peloton doing a, a high interval of some shit. The arms were I'm dying. And the instructor said, started talking about one of my films and said, has anyone else seen this? Because that's a couple of hours of my life, I'll never get back again. <laughs> I did see that Christopher Nolan's uh, favorite Peloton instructor did roast one of his movies. They said, and I quote, that's two hours of my life, I won't get back. It's a very funny news story. Um, and that's, what, that's really all there is to it. I don't, I don't have like a whole wealth of content to glean from that. All, I say this as someone who's in an industry that's sort of like tangential to um, a Peloton instructor. I'm not, I wouldn't call myself like a tangential to a film director. It's kind of a different sort of thing. But it's, it's not that dissimilar to a Peloton instructor. So I have to, if anyone's getting on the Peloton instructor's case, I just have to say that they have the right to, uh, to their opinions on media, you know? They should be able to, you know, you're on the bike for 30 minutes. They can't just say, oh, cadence 80, resistance, uh, you know, 35 to 40. They got to they gotta talk about little, uh, you know, little banter holes now and then. I do the same. Like, I'd be uh, uh, annoyed if, like, a director watched my content and I talked about their movie and said I didn't like it. And then he, like, the director got on me on Twitter and was like, what do you mean you don't like it? It's like, bro, I'm literally just talking right now. I should have diplomatic immunity. I'm not a film critic. I'm just a guy. What, people aren't allowed to, like, not like your movies? I think it's yap immunity. If you're a movie critic, or well, the other, you shouldn't be responding to movie critics and being like, no, actually, you're wrong. The movie's good. But, like, at least that's kind of like, the, but they're the opposing forces in the arena. I'm literally just a dude in the stands, and I'm like, I'm rooting for the lads in the blue shirts. What if a Peloton instructor said he didn't like your Isaac episodes? It, I, I know you're gonna hit me with a, a sure on this one. It would roll off of me like water off of a duck's back. It's part of the, part of the business. Now, if he came into chat and said, um, hey, I don't like your Isaac episodes, I would, I would ban him because that's just spreading hate for no reason. And as somebody that's in the industry, they should know better than to go to someone else's stadium and go, uh, hey, I don't like this. It's the same way, like, I would never go to a studio ride for Peloton and be like, you know, hey, uh, Christine, I don't like your rides. You know, that's her home turf. Did you see Jen Sherman dissing Chris Nolan? Wait a minute. 
are you th this is an extra wrinkle because we did talk about it are you telling me that christopher nolan's favorite peloton instructor is jen sherman what the fuck was going on in that movie do you understand seriously you need to be a neuroscientist to understand and that's two and a half hours of my life that i want back i want it back that in and of itself is like i'm not trying to be a hater i'm just yapping but that calls into question you know what it is He's really good at making movies. He doesn't have the best choice in Peloton instructors. He's very smart in one domain and a normie in all the other ones. That's completely fair. I knew there were Jen Sherman fans out there, but uh, I, I wouldn't have expected necessarily Chris Nolan to be one of them. The Shermanator. She does, if you called her the Shermanator, she would cancel the ride. She would stop pedaling and call your ass out. By the way, can I say something? I, I thought I was going to get crucified for saying this in the Discord. But it's true. This weekend, I hadn't had a McDonald's hamburger in a long time. Um, this weekend, Kate wasn't feeling too well. She said, I want McDonald's. I said, sure, no problem. I ordered the McDonald's through the app. I thought to myself, you know, I don't really want to eat like a whole McDonald's combo. It's just a little much for me right now. So I just added a McDouble. I know what you're going to say, McDouble's pretty prodigious sandwich. It's only 370 calories. It's not even, like, I, I expected it to be like six, 700, but it's not that crazy. I ate it. Um, I enjoyed it immensely. And I want to say something, but I, let's talk through it together. The McDouble, it actually clears 95% of restaurant hamburgers. And I'm not just talking about fast food hamburgers. I'm talking about sit-down restaurant hamburgers. Let me explain. First, it's right-sized. You can eat it in one hand, and it stays together while you eat it. It's a little bit congealed, but like most restaurant burgers, like once you pick it up, it's hard to put it back down without it falling apart. And the top bun and the bottom bun are getting like plate tectonics and shifting. Number two... They do something with the pickles and the cheese. I don't know what it is. American cheese almost always tastes bad. But for some reason, in a McDonald's hamburger, it's like Nicole Kidman at AMC. Even American cheese tastes good in a place like this. I don't really know if I have a number three. I guess number three is like... Because I, I was hitting some objections in the Discord. They said the McDouble used to be a dollar. And now it's like, you know, two seventy nine dollars or something like that. That may be true. But a restaurant hamburger used to be $9, and now they're all $16.79. So, I mean, like, we're, as long as we're comparing apples to apples here, everything's gone up in price, okay? I, the McDonald's prices might have gone up a little bit less than the, the average restaurant. Also, in today, I know McDonald's health-wise, you know, it, it gets a bad rap, and there's good reasons for that. But I feel like... 370 calories in today's modern era is actually like a, it, it almost feels like a downright, it's a caloric bargain given the flavor. Let's put it that way. Like obviously the, the macros maybe are not <laughs> uh, health food, so I'm tiptoeing a little bit. <laughs> but like the, the baked oatmeal I had for breakfast this morning is like by design, it's like, you know, 450 calories per serving or something like that. The McDouble at 370 doesn't seem like that horrible when you consider that. Now, I saw some people saying they're eating three McDoubles in a sitting. That's not the restaurant's fault, okay? That's something you got to take up with God, okay? So that's my, that's my thoughts on a McDouble. And I honestly, it, it had been a long time since I'd had a McDonald's hamburger. And uh, those are my honest opinions. I may occasionally, I've been a chicken nugget Andy since I was like, five years old probably, I may occasionally mix a, a, a McDouble into the ecosystem instead. Did you know that in Super Size Me, the reason the dude got so messed up is because he was an alcoholic, not because he was eating McDonald's every day? Listen, I'm sure that there is a little of column A and column B, but that is actually my Morgan Spurlock black pill. It's like when we watched that shit in 11th grade, after like two weeks of eating McDonald's, he goes into the doctor and the doctor's like, your liver uh, enzymes look horrible. They look like a late stage alcoholic. 
the dude was like, oh my God, I got to stop eating McDonald's. He was a late stage alcoholic at the time. It's a scam, bro. I'm not saying it's good for you. I'm just saying supersize me kind of like it's 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 fake man we got to do like a second supersize me with just a guy just find a regular guy and and be like you because i'm sure he's gonna have some side effects okay but we at least need a we need a control to the experiment right yeah and then his girlfriend was like oh he's suffering from like sexual performance issues me watching that in the 11th grade, I was like, what the hell are they putting in the Big Macs? Me watching it now, I'm like, oh, duh. <laughs> Not to make light of, of his condition, but at the same time, I'm like, this... They were really lighting that corporation up, bro. It is funny. You're right. Well, I, I shouldn't say you're right. I'll say you're not wrong. Back in the day, that movie was like a huge deal, and now it would literally be like a 20-minute YouTube video. That is damn true. See, given what we've talked about already, someone in chat has asked multiple times, do you know the movie Wolf from 1994? Please tell me you're not the director of Wolf, okay? Because we just went over this. You shouldn't be going into people's chats, picking fights with them just based on their opinion of the movie, okay? Maybe they loved it, maybe they hated it, maybe they don't get it. But you, you made the piece of art and now the art, it partly belongs to you and it partly belongs to society, okay? You can't be its steward for the rest of your life. You make it, you put it out into the world, and then you see what happens. Anyway, I've never, I've never seen it, I think. I don't know if I've ever heard of it. So you believe in the death of the artist then? I don't know about all that. I just like watch things. Or, well, I was gonna say or read things, but let's be honest. I do listen to things from time to time. I think I kind of believe in death of the artist. Because like, artists change over time. I think if you could get a, uh, an, if you could, Flash memory, a copy of Billy Corgan, circa 1993. That artist has ownership over Cherub Rock. But Billy Corgan 2023 is not Billy Corgan 1993. I'm sure if I asked him, like, what's your magnum opus, he would talk about something insane. I would, I'm like, it's no longer you. It was a version of you 30 years ago that wrote that that I would treat as an authoritative source on that. My impression of Cherub Rock is now the authority to which I serve, rather than the, a version of you that used to exist and no longer does. Melancholy is better. Okay, I get it, you love Panic, panic at the Disco. That's fine. You're a theater kid, there's nothing wrong with that. I can get down with Tonight Tonight, just like anybody can, but for me, me, me personally, I'm a, uh, I'm a Siamese Dream enjoyer. Some of their earlier work as well, although to be honest, I think Smashing Pumpkins, one of those bands where actually when they got a little bit more mainstream, temporarily, they got a lot better. You know, like almost Nirvana style. When they kept the, the noise, but then they added like some melodic hooks, that's where they were at their peak for me. And then they lost it, I don't know, not with Melancholy, but after that. No, I don't think there's a parallel universe where I'm an anime fan. And I, I say that honestly. I, I watched Dragon... Well, I, I watched Sailor Moon as like a really young kid. It used to air on the Canadian Cartoon Channel. I didn't really know what I was watching, you know? I was like... Probably like five to eight years old. Then later I got into Dragon Ball Z. And, and of course, when the Pokemon anime came on, I was a big fan of the game. So I watched it all the time. But then as a teenager, which I feel like is a very important moment in a in a embryonic anime fan's life, I remember Josh told me like, hey, you know, you can use VLC media player to watch like streamed anime. And I turned on something and I watched for like 12 minutes or something. And I was like, I don't think this is for me. Even like I watched Pokemon and then they were hyping up Digimon, Digimon. They were like, Digimon's coming after Pokemon, even though it came out before or something, and it's even better. And then I watched like four episodes of Digimon, and I was like, they're cooked, man. It's fucking washed. I got exposed to it as like a, basically like a 13 year old. And then my body just rejected it, and I never really went back. You know the way that like, when some people watch like a Yorgos Lanthimos film, they go, why does everybody talk like that? That's kind of what I feel when I watch, like, 95% of animes. 
I don't know if it's just that I, it, my brain is refusing to treat it as art and instead I'm like, real people don't talk like this, which is not fair to the medium, I'll admit. Like, it's just, I don't know how to say it except to say that like, my, my brain almost rejects it. Even when I saw uh, Your Name in theaters, for the first like 20 minutes of Your Name, all the body swap and stuff, I was like, here we go again. <laughs> And then after that, you know, by the end of the movie, I was like, that was really, really good. I'm in tears. But the first 20 minutes, my, my body tried to reject it. And I went, hold! We're going to hold through this one, okay? I like Ghost in the Shell, too. I haven't seen that many anime films. Most of the... I've seen Akira, too. Most of the ones I've seen, I really like. But that's because I choose only the ones that have actually, like, breached containment. <laughs> <I don't laughs> Whenever people are like, you should watch this one, I'm like, I don't know. I've never heard anybody else talk about it. You might be right. You might be right. Perfect Blue. Perfect Blue, the one with the... the, um, the it's parasocial. I don't want to spoil anything. Is Perfect Blue parasocial? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I know Perfect Blue. I know I've read the Wikipedia synopsis like 10 times. Paprika? Wait a minute, isn't that one? That's parasocial. How many of these fuckers are parasocial, bro? Is Paprika from the same dude as Perfect Blue? It is, okay. Satoshi Khan? How did that dude have time to make these movies while he was inventing the blockchain? Paprika's the dog from Blue's Clues? Listen, motherfucker, now you're talking about anime I know well, so you better come correct. Blue is the dog from Blue's Clues, my man. OMG, he knows. My kid doesn't really watch Blue's Clues, but it comes on the TV sometimes. She's really in the number blocks right now. Big ups to uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation. Same, we watch a lot of number blocks. Number blocks feels like it's, it's TV I don't feel bad about my kid watching. Because literally... Every episode of Number Blocks, like, teaches you how to do math through a story. There's a, there's a character for, like, 1 through 20. And it has taught my kid more about numbers than I have in, like, three years of her life. Like, the, the other day, she was just like, Dad, can we be Number Blocks? And I said, what number should I be? And she said, you should be 40 or 60. And I went, when did we, when did they get introduced into the ecosystem? We were, we were doing 1 through 20. Now all of a sudden she's like, you should be 40 or 60. Then sometimes I'm like, can you count from 50? She usually goes 50, 51, 52, etc., etc. Then after 59, she says 100. I'm like, I'm still pretty impressed. She's, she's almost got the pattern. Toddler improv is so exhausting though. We've talked about it a lot. Hello, Jay, by the way. Hello. But like... Honestly, like it's the the hardest part about spending time with my child. Most of the time, you know, it's it's exhausting, but it's joyful, you know, and you're, it's rewarding. Obviously, you're, she's learning stuff. I'm learning stuff about her. I'm learning stuff about myself. But like the improv is is so exhausting because they do not yes end. Like my kid will say like, "Hey, let's play number blocks," and I'm like, "All right, what do we do to play number blocks?" And then she's like, you just pretend to be a number block. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means. So I go, okay, I'm number six. And she goes, no, you can't be number six. Like, number six is a girl. And I'm like, listen, we'll deal with that whole issue later. What number is a boy? And she's like, number four is a boy. I'm like, okay, I'm number four. And then I'm just walking around going like, you know, I'm number four. I'm number four. And then she's like, no, number four doesn't sound like that. And I'm like, how does number four sound? And she's like, he doesn't talk. And I'm like, well, what are we, what do I, what am I supposed to do? Cause like, we got three hours of this. I'd like to get some momentum. It doesn't make any sense, man. I'm like, can't we just play, like, can't we just make a tower or something? Can't we just stack some blocks or play? I'm like begging. Can we play with the lunchbox set? Can we play with the lunchbox set? I don't want to play with the lunchbox set. You be number four, but don't talk like that. I'm like. I'm looking at the clock. It's like three minutes before I started playing. I'm like, how does this work? We got time dilation. There's another game she likes to play. It's, uh, it's called Camping. How does camping work? She lays down on uh, my bed. 
the bed that I share with my wife, and then she cuddles up under the covers. Sometimes, you know, I've been awake for 12, 13 hours at this point. I'm a little tired. I might like to get in my bed that I paid for, the sheets that I paid for, in the house that I pay for. And then I lay down in the bed and she says, no, you're not allowed to camp here. Go to your apartment. And I'm like, what's my apartment? And she says, my playroom. And I'm like, okay. So I'm sitting on like a chair designed for a three-year-old. Like my spine is like. <laughs> and then she'll run into that room and be like, where are you? And I'm like, you told me to come here, lady. And then she's like, no, give me a case. And I'm like, I don't even understand what we're doing anymore. A case? Then I find out apparently there's an episode of the number blocks where like one of the numbers is a private detective. And uh, number nine is like, someone broke into my house and stole all my furniture. Oh, fuck. And then, um, so they, they get the suspects. Uh, is, is a two block wide number block that's shorter than me. So they figure out, like, um, it must be number six. So then they go to number six's apartment, and uh, all of number nine's furniture is there. And he's like, arrest that thief! And then they realize, actually, number nine is an idiot. He dropped off his own furniture in number six's apartment because he thought it was a number nine, but upside down. So we're supposed to, apparently, like, just repeat that episode that I haven't even really seen out loud together forever, forever, hours and hours and hours consecutively. And if you ever try to deviate it at all, it's back to square one. No, they did not execute number nine. Well, I don't know. I've only seen 300 episodes. Maybe later they do. Because the episodes are 91 seconds long each. It's the only British show... Oh, yeah, smart idea. <laughs> I'm so washed. <laughs> it's the only British show ever that has more than six episodes per season. And it has a million. She's learning British math, though. There, There is that. I'm just glad she hasn't learned British English, though. Like, I... She hasn't watched any Alpha Blocks. Because if she starts saying A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, like, that's the end of iPad time, I'll tell you that much. It's probably the way your granddad felt when he, you came over wearing one of those Dragon Ball Z shirts. My niece says I can't, like Peppa Pig and everything else like a normal American. I've been blessed to not have my child pick up the Peppa Pig accent. Which, I'm like, I'm inviting, uh that into my life because I read the books like we have Peppa Pig books we have Bluey books etc etc I read those in the accent of the native country that they come from because I think that's only respectful so I do read the Peppa Pig books with a British accent and I read the um, the Bluey books in a New Zealand accent now you might be saying Bluey is from Australia that's true but I only found that out after I'd read them in the New Zealand accent like 30 times. So I can't go to an Australian accent now or my kid is gonna be like, what's going on? Like, this isn't right. Posture check, pretty good, honestly. My, um, my back is against the back of my chair. I do have my legs crossed, but my right foot is, uh, is on the floor, um, both toe and heel. Legs crossed, you lost. What is this, it's like a, I'm getting bullied like I'm on the playground? I said this, I think I said it in a, in a sap video, I can't remember. I'm here to tell you, you can cross your legs. If you're a man, you can cross your legs, okay? The, the genesis of this is like when you're a kid, you have to learn from those around you, you know? You look at older people in your life as an authority. You're like, they've been here longer, they got it figured out. You look at how, you know, boomer men sit, it's always like... Legs spread wide open, elbows on quads, hand in the chin in their hands. Like that. I thought that was how men sit. So, you know, I endeavored to sit like that 
when I first became a, a young man myself. Now, I'm older. I'm, I, I can be part of the change that I want to see in the world. I'm no longer fighting my body's natural impulse to cross my legs. I'm a man. I got fans. I got a job. I got a kid. I'm a, I'm, I'm a man. I'm 40. Strong men can also cross their legs. My peanuts don't fit. Well, I don't have that problem. But I don't think that your peanuts don't fit, okay? I think that you are signaling. You're trying to be like, well, actually, I have a large penis. Ha ha ha. Nobody cares, bro. It's 2024, okay? Small dicks are cool. They're actually cooler than big dicks, probably. Right, guys? Right? Who's with me? <laughs> Who's with me? Nobody. Nobody said anything. Fuck. I just want you to know I actually have a huge penis. I would just want her to be an ally to all the small dick dudes out there. My dick is big. It's actually too big. It's a problem. That's why I cross my legs. If I cut off some of the blood flow, I might be able to lose a couple inches off the end. I, I'm just going to say it. My, me personally, again, you know I'm 90s maxing. Fruit is a solved game. In the 2000s, there were probably still fruits being discovered um, that are taste good and have a place in the average daily diet. We found them all at this point. Anytime that I'm at the grocery store and they're like, it's a new fruit, I'm like, no, no, we found, I'm sorry, we found them all. You made a pomelo, I love that for you, but the rambutans, the mangosteens, all that stuff. I try it once and I go, that's interesting. I will never purchase it again. And then um, I just go, with apples, bananas, oranges, mangoes, pears. When did the mango come out? Because that was like one of the most, maybe the most recent significant patch to fruit that has happened in my lifetime. I know they've been around like worldwide for a long time, but... I feel like they only started getting introduced where I lived in like maybe 2001. 2008 in Ontario. I told you the story, right? I used the first job I ever had. I worked with a guy who went to school in Singapore. And one day at lunch, he was eating a fruit I'd never seen before. And I was like, whoa, what is that? And he's like, Oh, it's a mango. I used to eat them all the time in Singapore. Do you want a piece? And he was, it, it was like Boo Radley style. Like he was eating it off of the back of a knife that he was slicing it with while he was eating lunch. And I said, sure, I'll try a slice. So he cuts me off like a slice, like backwards. And then he holds out the knife to me and I ate that shit off the blade. Like when he like pulled my chin up and my eyes were like, It was the sweetest fruit I'd ever tasted in my entire life. It was a, a, a moment of awakening for me. I did not say thank you, daddy. I probably went, no, that's pretty good. Bro, that fruit's legit. <laughs> but that was like the, I think it's the last time I've ever eaten like a, a fruit that was new to me and been like, oh, I'm gonna eat this like as much as I can. Did I ever tell you about the time um, we came back from to our university house from winter break and uh, whoever was last out of the house forgot to put the garbage out? Yikes. It was probably me. I can't say with certainty it was me, but that sounds like something that maybe I would do. Anyway, so we came back, you know, after like a week and a half, two weeks away, and the garbage can was infested with um, all stages of insect life. Live insects like adult insects uh maggots slugs eggs etc etc so we said well we got to handle this um my housemate came down you know in, into the garbage can like we took the bag out bagged it up in the garbage can there was still a, just a ton of like it was like a terrarium in there um my housemate came down with like a bunch of household cleaners it's regular Steven, thank you! And uh, he poured like one of the cleaners into the garbage can to kill the bugs. 
And then he started to uncork the bleach. And I was like, buddy, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm just going to pour, like, all of them into the garbage can. I'm going for it, man. Uh, just to make sure they're dead. And I'm like, you're going to create mustard gas. And he said, no, no, no. And I said, no, no, no. That's how you do it, is you just combine, like, every household cleaner. And he said, oh, okay, I didn't know. And that's the story of how I saved all of our lives. Also, what's crazy? A lot of people will hear that story and be like, that kid was dumb. He's actually not. He's like one of the smartest guys I've ever met in my entire life. Now, the scary part is that he was an engineer. <laughs> so he probably should have learned this at some point. But this should... I think it's a stupid response to that story to be like, he's dumb, that would never happen to me. The, the smart response to that story is that everybody has blind spots and that's why you need checklists and fail-safes and like other people to check your work and stuff like that. Like the billionaires in the sub? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I think that it's dangerous to be too smart without being the smartest person that's ever lived. Like, I, I think there's like, it's, if you'll allow me to use my education here, I think it's a bit like a Punnett square, okay? And one axis is like smart dumb, and the other axis is smart dumb. Being 100% smart is great. Full stop. Being 100% dumb is really bad. Because you're not smart and you're probably too dumb to trust the smart people. Now the other two corners are where it gets tricky. I think it's good to be dumb smart. That's where I would put myself to be. I don't think I'm that intelligent necessarily. You could argue maybe verbal intelligence, sure. I'm not trying to insult myself. I'm just saying academically, I'm not that smart. Maybe I have good reasoning and self-awareness, but like, okay, you can keep the compliments coming. But I think I'm dumb smart. I'm dumb, but I'm smart enough to trust the people who are actually smart. That's like a, a light win, in my opinion. Probably not as good as being smart smart, but smart dumb is the danger zone. That's where you're smart, smarter than the average person, but too dumb to realize that that intelligence doesn't extend to every domain in the world. That's the scary part, where you're like, I'm a good chemical engineer, so I'm like a better driver than the average person. I'm a better chef than the average person. I'm better at building a Titanic exploring submarine than the average person. I think that's where you get yourself into trouble. At some point in your life, I think it would behoove you to figure out whether you're smart, smart, in which case, keep on keeping on. Smart, dumb, which is, I think, the danger zone, or dumb, smart. Now, if you're dumb, dumb, I don't really know what to do with that, okay? That's something that's between you and, and God, all right? But I think there's a lot of people out there who are smart, dumb, who would be doing a lot better if they gave themselves over to dumb, smart. Gus Fring was smart, smart. Okay, true. Walter White was smart, dumb. Very true. Jesse Pinkman was dumb smart. Okay, I gotta think about that one. Jesse Pinkman was dumb smart. By the end, maybe Jesse Pinkman was dumb smart. By the way, you are... I think you're smart smart for putting this into a Breaking Bad political compass so that it's more digestible by those of us out here who are either dumb dumb or dumb smart. So I'm elevating you to smart smart from whatever category you were previously in. Marie was smart smart? Mar Hank's wife? How smart could she be, bro? She was stealing all those little spoons. She was dumb, dumb? I don't think she's dumb, dumb. I don't think she does anything where I would be like, like, trying, who's, who's dumb, dumb? I feel like Tuco, not Tuco Salamanca. No, no, no. Yeah, I feel like Tuco Salamanca is kind of dumb, dumb. He was, he was reckless, but he thought that he was a legend. No, that's, that's smart, dumb. I'm too dumb, smart to keep my damn metaphor straight. <laughs> anyway, I think we got to we got to where we were trying to get from. The metaphor kind of fell apart a little bit, but I think about that all the time. You know what really makes me think about that? 
Apologies is it's self caricature, but it's the it's the truth. I think about that on Disney cruises all the time. Whenever there's a line for something, and then people start to say things like, "Why would they do it like this?" They should really just do it like this instead. And I'm like, really? You think like you've literally been here for a minute and these people have been in the business for 30 years and you think you've solved all their problems. Like you don't think they considered the variables that are presenting themselves. You think they were just like, let's do it in the dumbest way possible. But then they whip themselves into a frenzy. You get too many smart dumbs around each other. They're like, I know that's what I've been saying. Two idiots can have the same opinion. It happens all the time, bro. I'm sure if you actually brought it up to the staff, well, the staff would probably be like, yes, sir, we're sorry, we'll consider it. But in like the back rooms, Monka S, they'll be like, yeah, another day, another person told me how to like reinvent the process that we've reinvented a thousand times into the most optimized form. Explain airline seating then? What's the problem with airline seating? I don't know. I always hear people say like they should board the plane front to back. And I'm like, that's what we do. Like, when was the last time you were on an airplane, bro? They do front to back on the plane? No, they do first class military people with small children. And then in economy, they do back to front. They do front to back. You guys got to fly with Air Canada. Star Alliance is uh, number one North American carrier for 11 years running. Also, I know this is kind of, it flies, uh, pun unintended, unfortunately, in the face of the way that I normally talk. But, you know, take it from an, an old head. A number of things while flying, could it be done better? Or not even better, but like more efficiently? Probably. But at the end of the day, the number one thing that would probably benefit most passengers when air traveling is just chilling the fuck out a little bit. Like... It's always, there's going to be elements of it that always suck, okay? You got 200 people that are basically all getting on a bus with five suitcases each. Like, there's going to, you're going to bump into people. There's going to be friction. There's going to be a limited amount of space. You can't control the processes of the airline. All you can control to some extent is like your blood pressure during the the process like you're gonna arrive probably within 10 or 15 minutes of the time that it says on the ticket you're all gonna get there at the same time you're gonna get to your hotel just chill out like do a little goose fraba i know it's like the, there's the impulse right it's like because i feel it myself but but it should be like this it should really be like this instead we could all save three minutes total it's okay you know you, you're right but you're only punishing yourself you know you're, you're driving yourself into an early grave um, by, by your discontentment, you know? And you're probably... Listen, we all know, you get to the gate, you spot somebody, you're like, this person's gonna be the most annoying person on the flight. We all know that 98% of the people on the flight zero in on that person immediately. You're like, this is the squeaky wheel. I'm gonna stay away. Me looking at a baby. Me looking at the dude with enormous over-the-ear noise-canceling headphones and a Neon Genesis Evangelion shirt. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Two can play that game as long as we're going to get into personal attacks. But apart from the one person or like the one family who's causing all the problems, everybody is annoying everybody else. The people who are annoying you are also being annoyed by you. And I know you're like, no, no, no. I'm like self-aware and I stay out of people's way. I like to think that too, but I think it's a little naive, you know? Like when I'm in a hurry and I'm walking and someone doesn't shoulder check and they kind of bump into me while I'm moving by, in my head, I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. And then they're like, oh, sorry. And I'm like, yeah, you better be sorry. Sorry, like you exist and got in my way. But then whenever I'm walking uh, leisurely and someone's like rushing by me and they bump into me, I'm like, oh, sorry. But then I'm like, what's the hurry, Turbo? We're, all, we're both going to the same gate. Like, what do you... Ru rush there as fast as possible, like, just to get in line? What are we doing? Like, no matter what, I'm always the good guy. <laughs> At least in the moment. Later, I'm like, okay, maybe that's my fault. That's healthy, though? No, I know, but that's why I'm saying, instead of being like, everybody on this flight is annoying, and it's the airline's fault, you should just recognize that anytime you come in contact with a large group of other people, especially with strangers, 
you know you, you don't have like the 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 rapport with them that you have with your friends where you cut them a little bit of slack instead we don't want to fight the boss right away you would you assume the worst in them you know, it would always in almost every situation it would behoove most of us to just chill out a little bit easier said than done but people do i mean they sometimes lose their entire sense of what explosivo <laughs> It's the name of uh, the song, Explosivo. Don't know what it's about, but it's good to go. I remember I was on a flight one time, and an old man pulled out his electric razor in the, his seat and started shaving, which is just, to me, is insanity. Like, even if it's got one of those hair catchers, man, the hair is getting fucking everywhere. Like, that's psychotic. Or, like, clipping your toenails while you're on the flight, that's crazy, too. What about the guy who cooks in the airplane bathroom? No, I, I'm, I say this without a hint of irony. The dude who's doing the cooking in the airplane bathroom on TikTok, he shouldn't go to prison, but he should be banned from flying on any airline, uh, any airline for the rest of his life. Like, it's kind of funny, but at the same time, I'm like, bro, I gotta, I gotta piss. <laughs> Like, I could, could you just do your TikTok content someplace else? Like, I got to go to the bathroom. I got to do in the bathroom, like, what I'm designed to do in the bathroom. Or what the bathroom's designed for me to do in the bathroom. Put him in the luggage hold? I mean, that shit is just crazy. Now, the one of the, the video of the dude smoking a bowl and chugging a beer and then releasing the smoke from the bowl, and then the, it, the zooms out and reveals that he's in one of those, like, Ikea... Uh, prefab rooms inside of the store. That's cool as hell. He probably should be banned from Ikea by the corporation, but like he's not, in my opinion at least, he's not harming anybody societally speaking. Check it out, Dab and Granny. I'm gonna try and do this fucking do Granny, grab, Dab and Granny style. People will be like, oh, like I have my kid here. Like your kid is 15 years old. They're seeing worse than that. And they're going to be like in undergrad in two years anyway. Like I wouldn't worry about it too much. He should cook in the Ikea kitchen. Yeah. Now, see? And people give King Solomon a bad name. I like... I talked about it a lot before, but it, it genuinely pisses me off. Those videos of like... Someone in their seat will take a video and be like, the people beside me are having sex right now, or the people in the row behind me are having sex. That shit pisses me off. People always assume it's like, oh, you're jealous? I'm like, no, I'm not jealous. It's just fucking weird ass behavior. You've made me part of your sex, and I'm just like going to work right now, <laughs> or like I'm going to see like my family. Like, just, I, I'm not even going to say you have to do it when you get home. Like, I'm not saying, like, hide that behind closed doors. But, like, don't make me a part of it, man. And also, if you're going to be stealthy when you do it, be so stealthy that I don't know clearly that you're doing it. Because it's, like, one of the most annoying feelings, and it's something I got to search within myself to figure out why it bothers me so much, is when someone thinks they're getting away with something by being sneaky, and they're like obviously not sneaky at all. The reason that people aren't busting them is mostly because they're just embarrassed rather than like, you know, oh, we don't see what's happening. Like everybody sees what's happening. They just don't want to be the person that has to come up to like two middle aged weirdos and be like, can you not have sex in row J or whatever? It's like when if you're like 17 and you're drinking alcohol at the movie theater, 
nobody's busting you. It's not because like you're sneaky, because you're not sneaky. The bottles are clanging around. You're like laughing inappropriately, and then your friend is going shh. shh, shh, shh. It's just because nobody cares, man. So just like enjoy yourself. Most of the adults in the theater are drunk too. They're just, you know, <laughs> they're holding their shit together. <laughs> I don't know if like the, the people that are into that, if part of it for them is that they're like, you know, like, oh, other people are going to be offended by this. Like, this is taboo. It's like, it's not really taboo. Anyone could just whip it out and start going to town whenever. Like, you know what it is? I sort of, when I see, and I've never seen it in real life, but when I see two adults who are clearly, like, intoxicated in a viral video entering the Mile High Club thinking nobody can see them, that's the same way I think I would feel if a dude just whipped out his penis and started masturbating in public. Like, for some reason, for a subset of the population, like... One of them is like, ooh, that's like sneaky and like a little cool. And the other one is like, put this freak on the sex offenders registry. And I'm like, nah, man, put all three of them on the sex offenders registry. <laughs> They're, all three of them are fucking weirdos, bro. Get them all out of here. And take the people off the registry who were just urinating in public. That's not the spirit of the law. It doesn't make sense. Sugar is bad. I, well, maybe. I don't know. The jury's still out on that. Editors note, the jury is not out on that. But isn't it one of the... <laughs> Excuse me. Don't insult me. I'm not intelligent design pilled. I'm actually so evolution pilled that, I, that it's disgusting. I don't know. This is a joke that goes too much into evolutionary sort of like psychology, which was very in vogue when I was in, you know, my last couple of years in university. Basically, part of the, I don't know if this is an explicitly stated thesis of the discipline, but the idea was, you know, a after it became scientifically sorted that evolution and, you know, selection is a real thing, sort of almost everything uh, in human behavior in the field of biology came to be viewed through an evolutionary lens. So I don't know if it's still in vogue now, but if it was, you would be reading like master's uh, theses that were like, the, what is the evolutionary benefit of gooning, you know? You'd be like, well, maybe evolution has selected for humans that have a higher sex drive because in, our, in the historical record, they would have produced more progeny. Like that's what almost every single one of my senior year seminars was like. It's like, why do, why do human beings like television? Well, television means you're not hunting, gathering, or anything like that, but possibly entertainment historically, like in the prehistoric human civilization, would have led to stronger social bonds between members of the tribes, which would have led vis-a-vis uh, -vis to more fucking, which means more kids, which means better uh, chances for your genes to, you know, propagate through the next generation. And I was like... <laughs> So true, so true. I don't know, there's probably like an element of truth to it to some extent. I don't know if it applies to like, I mean, if, if that could explain why society loves the Big Bang Theory, then it's the best hypothesis we got so far. Meanwhile, history majors say we know, or we don't know, but who cares anyway? History is kind of crazy to me. As, as a lay person who is only really interfacing with the Dan Carlin model of history, are we ever worried that eventually there's not going to be any history f to support the amount of historians out there? Like, I, I, my wife has a degree in performance of music, open parentheses, oboe, okay? So you, you, I promise you, I'm not telling you this from through the lens of like trying to be rude. There's too many musicians out there on planet Earth. They're producing too many people with music degrees. Not like, oh, I hate seeing them, but there's simply not enough fit in the market for the amount of people that are getting the degrees. They're graduating like 10,000 oboists a year worldwide, and there's like eight orchestra spots, okay? Now, you can still go to school for stuff that like, you know, is just enriches your life, 
But I do feel like a lot of the time, people, the, the kids that go into it are like, I'm going to be a professional musician. And then by the time you graduate, you're like, oh, fuck. People still don't really like classical music. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just... Listen, I have a biology degree. It's the same thing. Nobody wants a motherfucker with a bachelor's of science in biology. I was like, I want a stable job. Let me get a science degree. Then I got it, and every motherfucker was like, not that one. Are you insane? One of the other ones. <laughs> but is, it, is that not a possibility with history as well? They keep making more history? I guess not every historian is like studying ancient Rome, huh? Like, I, I guess you could be like a histor uh, historian who's like, my field of expertise is like 1997. In many ways, I feel like maybe being a, a historian is sort of like being a classical musician. Like a classical musician, oftentimes they get into it and they're like, oh, I'm like really into, you know, like the Baroque period of music. And then they pursue that and it's not financially viable. So then they have to play like, you know, hey, it's the music of Indiana Jones. And they look out at the concert hall and that bitch is packed. It's standing room only. And everybody in the theater is going, dun, 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 dun. and the movie's playing behind you on the background too. And you're like, what are we doing here? Is that like historians? They're like, my, my field of research is like mysticism in ancient Babylon. And then like five years down the road, you're like, fine, fucking history of aviation in World War II. And then the people are like, yes, take my money, please take my money. And then you're like, okay, that funds like three more years of me doing Gnosticism in pre-Battle of Hastings, England or something like that, right? Maybe it's something like that. I'm not touching this because I don't know what it does. Do you think historians in the future who specialize in the 2000s are in for a giga ride? Listen, again, I'm, I'm dumb smart, okay? So I'm just yapping. This may not apply. Um, in some ways, yes. In the sense that uh, there should be more records for them to sort through. But, like, historians are going to be fucking booming, bro, in like the year 2300. Imagine you get assigned to watch like all of World of T-Shirts' TikToks, write your master's thesis on that. That being said, I do, it, it feels like things are crazy, but within the context of like all of human history, I don't know if we're living in a particularly insane time. Like there's new things going on, but if you look at the, the history of humanity, like the little glimmer of it that we're even aware of, I mean, there was like a, a plague that killed a third of the world's population over the course of like 90 years. That shit would be like, I mean, I guess they've already studied that one. <laughs> if they haven't, they should get on it. Like, I would think that that's a little crazier than what we're going through. Or like, even like our great grandparents generation who, who lived through two world wars, one of which culminated with the invention of like a potentially species destroying weapon. Like that's fucking insane, bro. And that's great grandma, where when she shows up to Thanksgiving dinner, we're like, like happy to see her, but also like a little annoyed because she's not the greatest conversationalist. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Like, you're, you know what I'm saying, right? You're like, I'm happy she's here, but at the same time, like. We're not, it's not that productive for us. Because <laughs> she's racist? No, 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 not your grandma, your great-grandma. Your grandma might be a little racist. I'm 35, man. Like my great-grandma, I don't have any great-grandmas left, but... And I, I don't, I, I mean, it's been so, I can't even remember. I, think I might have only had one great-grandma when I was born. Kate's grandma uh, is 92 or something like that. It, it boggles my mind to think of what, like, she has seen in her life. It is insane, to th and I, I think it helps. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to minimize the struggles that other people are going through right now. Don't get me wrong. But I think it does help keep things in perspective for me. 
where I'm like, oh, the, you know, social media is creating like a disinformation age that's really troubling. Society's never been through something like this before. Then I think of Kate's grandma being born into like Korea that then got invaded by Japan, occupied by Japan for like 10 years, and then lived through the entire World War II under Japanese occupation, and then had like a five year break, and then the Korean War broke out when she was like 38 or something and devastated the entire country, which then got split into two, and the war never ended. And that shit ended probably, she was like 40, in her early 40s maybe, and she was probably like, I'm tapped. <laughs> it has been 50 years! She's, I guess it's been 70 years since the end of the Korean War, so she was a little younger, but... She's lived 70 years since then, man! That's just like the rise of South Korea from like a, a developing nation into like a technological juggernaut exporting like its culture worldwide. Creation of like, you know, seeing her home country go from like horses to electric automobiles and stuff like that is crazy, man. Yeah, the season one of Family Guy. You should show her skibbity toilet. I, at some point, you know, <laughs> I think it goes against the Hippocratic Oath, okay? That wouldn't be responsible. You think she'd be great at Sine 2 Nurdle? No, I don't think so. I think our fathers are warriors. Wait, our grandfathers were warriors, so their sons could be accountants, so we could be good at Sine 2 Nurdle. So that our kids could become accountants, so that our grandkids could become warriors. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of just yapping. But no, I don't know. Like, I guess my take on it is, I don't necessarily, I think we're living through an interesting time. I think in a way, all times are probably interesting. Like, I think if, even if you're living through a period of history where like, not that much happened in a historical sense, I'm sure you're not like, damn, this bitch boring as hell. Like, I'm sure you got your own, you know, problems to, concern yourself with. 40,000 BC, probably boring as fuck. But like, it's boring now. Because, <laughs> you know, when you live life, you don't really... At least like the stuff that we've lived through in the 20th century, it's not like every second of every day is saturated with historically meaningful events. Like, it's mostly like Netflix and work, and then like, in between that stuff, you're like, check out what happened today. Yeah, do you think anyone <laughs> during World War II ever turned on the news and they were like, oh, fucking, let me guess, World War II again. Here we go. Get some new material. Americans for the first few years. So true. Hey, uh, can I get a, a fact check? When did Canada enter World War II? Were we forced to declare war in uh, 1939 when, when England did? Or were we chilling for a bit? They didn't... <laughs> they don't teach us much of the bad stuff. 39 alongside the UK. On a very common Canadian dub. Get owned, America. Get owned. What took you so long? Oh, the New Deal, the Great Depression. Fuck you, bro. You weren't there, okay? Canada beat the US in the War of 1812. Listen. We can't go back to that rhetoric because I already told Americans the secret sauce. If you want, I, I can give you like a three-step process to, to make a Canadian very mad, because it's happened to me. First off, wait till America beats Canada, and not just places higher in a tournament, but actually literally beats them in, uh, in some sort of sporting event, and then start talking about how much better America is than Canada. Without a doubt, 100% of the time, they will bring up the War of 1812, They'll say, yeah, it, well, we burned down your White House in the War of 1812. And then you'll say, this is your next step. It's a multi-step process. You say, when did Canada become a country again? And most of them will say, I don't know. But if they don't know, the answer is 1867. And then you'll say, how could you defeat us in a war when you weren't even a country? The United Kingdom defeated the U.S. in the War of 1812. Canada didn't even exist then. There's no... I, again, because I've been there, there's no counter-argument to that. They just got to be like, well, be that as it may. But you only use that in a pinch, okay? 
like only if they really deserve it because it is a really like it's a tactical nuclear missile like you're not coming back from that you may not be friends afterwards hey nl you ever get tired of the humdrum and the drudgery um no honestly i personally i i think you have to embrace the humdrum and the drudgery i know we've talked about it before i'm sorry i'm gonna mute because i have to burp it's so nice to mute and let out a big burp when you have to burp instead of uh, like just going burp and still disgusting the people who get disgusted by burps and you don't feel like you had a big burp either. That's the way to do it, man. I mean, I'm not joking when I say that I think I would do okay as Sisyphus because at least I would have the rock. I'd have something to distract myself with. I think it's the humdrum and the drudgery that makes up like 95% of life. So you, you might as well do your best to embrace it as much as possible, you know? Turn some music on while you, you do the dishes. Um, put on a podcast while you fold your laundry. Put on, you put on my content on the second monitor. Drop, uh, give subscriptions. Uh, give me a million dollars, etc. So just stuff like that that helps the day go by quick. They really wanted to punish him. They'd take away his rock. This, but unironically. Okay, we're going to do some dulls here, okay? Librarian, <laughs> thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you, thank you. I used to have you on the second monitor. Oh, that's nice. Now I got you on the third one. What the fuck, bro? I'm sitting right here. You ever think about this? I, I don't mean this to be uh, insane or be uh, like a downer. And I don't even mean it to be, like, realistic in the way that people say, it's not mean, it's just realistic. But you ever watch, like, an action movie where they, like, try to save somebody's life and then realize that, like, if that person that they're saving, even if they're, like, you know, 30 years old, the stakes feel a lot lower when you realize that in 60 years they're going to die anyway. <laughs> Maybe I'm psychotic. But I'm like, Arnold, what are you doing saving that person's life, bro? Like, it makes the stakes seem... He should do it, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I'm watching this movie, like, if he doesn't save this person's life, the world is going to end. And I'm like, no, bro, he's... You're, you're, giving, you're not saving his life, you're buying him an extra 32 years, okay? That's nice, don't get me wrong. It's good that he's doing it. That's his role. Are you depressed? No, I'm, I'm loving life, I'm just... Bro, depressed people, I think that they don't think about that. Instead, they go, what's the point? And they think about what they get from DoorDash. And then they're like, not that. That doesn't seem like it would taste yummy right now. I'm asking the questions you're too afraid to ask, okay? Just because my joke didn't work, that doesn't mean that I am depressed, okay? It just means I made a, a joke that didn't hit. But I still think that the punchline has some meat in it. We just need to re reconfigure the mathematical calculation, okay? Poison bug. What is all of them? Um, wait, no, no, this is so easy. Weedle. Let's go. Poison water. Tentacool. What the fuck is Hizui? <laughs> Help me. Help me. What is cause what is Hizui? Chip, I'll try I'll try Cardle for you, sure. Absolutely. This is from Arceus Legends. Okay, so I'm simply not going to know it. Evolved by item. This is where I'm screwed because in Pokemon Go... Wait, whoa, no, 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 no. Vaporeon. Eh? And, like, I would think, like, what is a, a poison that evolves via... A bug that evolves via item? Scizor. Oh! Okay, hang on. Hold. I think I can get one more. I think I can find a psychic bug. No, I think I'm cooked, guys. But this is still, like, really impressive for me. Just type, uh, like, an X and then see what fills in. This, this, are you, you're not bug, you're grass. The most psych, just type psi. Psy Psychic water, psy duck. It's a duck. That's psy, bro. 
How could it not be? Okay, how about gold duck? I'm gonna flip my shit, bro. <laughs> how could, his name is Psy Duck. How could he not be psychic water? It doesn't make any sense. What the fuck is Orbital, bro? Cleavor. You want to talk about quiet quitting? How about a Pokemon named Cleavor that has axes for hands? My ass is still out here swinging for the fences saying stuff like, why do they bother saving people in action movies? They're just going to die of old age at some point anyway. Meanwhile, Pokemon team is like, I don't know. What about a dude with axes for hands? We'll call him Cleavor. It's literally just Scyther. Yeah, you're right. It's just non-bug Scyther. I don't respect. No, it's literally Scyther. Oh, it evolves into Scyther? Oh, my mistake. My mistake. That's kind of cool then. I'm kind of... I take back all that shit I said about them giving up. Cardle.uk? Oh, brother. <laughs> By the way, one of the things I do not know is cars. So especially like if the car is even slightly exotic, i.e. from Europe <laughs> at all, I will not know it, okay? Or I'll, I'll, I'll struggle to get it at least. Okay. Make and model. This is a Saturn. I can't even think of a Saturn. This is a Chevrolet Impala. Wrong. <laughs> That's not that helpful. This is... Those are Dodge handles, okay? This is a Dodge... Durango. That's It's a Toyota? Okay, this is a Toyota Yaris. Yes! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> they never thought it would happen. Holy brother. No, I don't know cars, but I do see Toyota Yaris's. I always think whenever I see it, it's kind of like the, the most smart car that's not a smart car. Like if I had to, I could actually push this car out of the way if it was illegally parked. NL, yesterday at Trivia, no one believed me when I answered that the country with the longest coastline was Canada, which I learned from you. How do I nut up and make them listen to me next time? Sometimes your role at Trivia is just to accept that um, you may not be able to win over everybody to accept that you have the right answer. So instead, you just have to take the dub that you can get. And the dub that you can get is being the I told you so guy. You get to be smug. I can see why they wouldn't believe it's Canada. You know, they would probably think like, oh, it's got to be like a little bit of a trick question. It probably is like not necessarily a large country. Instead, it's probably like a smaller country that has that's exclusively coastline, like Indonesia or something like that. Yeah, I can see how if you didn't know the answer verbatim, you could trick yourself into answering not Canada. I don't blame them, but Indonesia is massive. Um, well, let's just see. Canada versus Indonesia size. So Canada is about five times bigger than Indonesia. Indonesia is approximately 1.9 million square kilometers, while Canada, whoo, <laughs> almost 10 million square kilometers. Oh, I mean, I, I'm not saying it's a small country. I'm just saying when you come from a point of reference of like the second largest country on earth um, with the largest coastline or the longest coastline, I mean, you got to remember that like, this is the frame of reference that I'm coming from, okay? Now do population. That doesn't matter. They said big. They didn't say crowded. I believe Indone Indonesia is way more crowded than Canada. We're four times bigger. <laughs> and like a large part of the country is covered in permafrost. Can I tell you something, by the way? I'm not putting this in a clip. I'll let librarian take it. I've been committing a neighbor faux pas. And I'm loving every minute of it, Jerry. I believe I've told you that um, we moved onto this block roughly the same time as our neighbors. Uh, got to know them a little bit, you know. We see them now and then when we take out the garbage. Then, starting in mid-October, they have not been at their house at all. 
no movement, no in and out, no lights, their garage never opens, they never put out their trash, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Last couple of weeks, we've had a lot of trash and a lot of recycling because of the fact that, uh, like it was the holiday season, we had people over, they opened presents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Our garbage didn't fully fit in our garbage can. I said, fuck it, bro. They leave their garbage cans outside. I put some of my garbage in their can, pulled it out to the end. Garbage truck came through today. It's a perfect crime, bitch. You can't do that? I did. They're not using it. Are you insane? It was either that or I don't know what to do with the bag. I'm not going to put the bag in my garage for a week. It's going to stink, stink the joint up. Are they dead? No, they just, like, they're from another country. So I think they kind of, like, moved in and then fucked off, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it's too cold in the wintertime, even though it's actually really mild here. So they're living someplace else. I feel like I didn't do anything wrong. That being said, they do have a, a security camera on their garage. So I've already planned what's going to happen. Like if they come back and they're like, hey, did you use our garbage can? I'm just going to say yes. And then if they take offense to that, I'll apologize. And then later in the day, I will bring them some food. And I will say, hey, I don't want there to be bad blood uh, between us because we live together. Uh, it won't happen again. I'll explain the situation as best as I can, and then I will, if they're offended, I'll give them a peace offering because we have to live ne next to each other. Crimes? Dude! My husband, he's a, he's a outlaw. When he told me what crime that he has committed yesterday, I want to make clear I had no part on his crime. It was his own decision. It was his own plan. I did not get involved in any of this. He only told me the result at the end. Was it the trash can thing? It was the trash can thing. If they knock on the door and if they complain, I'm going to say, I don't know anything about this. You talk to my husband. Did I take our neighbor's tent in? No. I am not getting involved in your crime. You better bring their cam back in. <clears throat> I am not leaving my fingerprints on that thing. Look at him being smooth with it. He's like, oh, but by the way, did you bring the trash can? Like, he's so smooth with, so smooth with it. He's, he's luring me to this crime. All right, I'll be right back. People giggle. This is, this is the gateway to how to end up in prison you start with the neighbor's garbage can and then and then i don't know what else honestly <laughs> i don't know what garbage crime that you can do and then text fraud i don't know how the garbage turns into text fraud but maybe he will become a raccoon <clears throat> bros walking over with 12 bananas saying sorry about that sorry if you're offended Yes. I dare not look. I need to wait for him to lay down first. If I turn around, he's going to run over to me. What are we doing? Bro, fucking chill, okay? I'm waiting for this dude to take a nap. He's, he's lilting. It won't be long now. He's 
freaking me out, bro. Take a picture. It'll last longer. All right. We got 44 minutes. Let's play some Sine 2 Nurdle. He left. No, no, no. Slash marker. Sine Nurdle. Chad, is this real? Did Sine Nurdle really add a, a patch to the game that shows you when your opponent alt tabbed? They did? Play oh, it's right there. Players are now notified when opponents switch tabs in game. Ooh, I had no choice but to play Sine Nurdle today. Otherwise, Conspiracy Andes would be like, it's kind of weird how we stop playing the game as soon as uh, they release this update. Yeah, like I got 17 tabs open here. I'm reading chat, having a discourse, beating the bones off of people in Sine Nurdle at the same time. You think I got that kind of mental bandwidth, bro? I wish. Now, I don't remember how to get out of Gotti, and I need to be able to get out of Gotti to not draw. So, instead, I will play primary colors for now. And then I'll figure, I'll, I'll go to chat after this and remember how to escape Gotti. Okay, now that we've committed, how does one escape Gotti again? Oh, it's got um, Kelly Preston. Googling Gary is opening another, oh, well, well, well. Googling Gary. Guess 209895273866 exposed. Well, well, well. Sling blade, huh? I'll take you to Bandits 2001. That is slick, bro. You know what's great is that they don't lose, it just embarrasses them. It's even better. Mr. Woodcock, I'll cast on that one. I'm not afraid of a Googling Gary. You want to go goon for goon with me, you son of a bitch? No, oh, I was alt tabbed because I got a message from my mom. It's really important. You're on role models. Okay, I'm going goon two, last of the enforcers. I'll goon twice if you don't meet my goon with a goon. Well, well, well. <laughs> if it isn't Googling Gary, that's shameless, bro. That's embarrassing. I will, you don't deserve to get a rematch, quite frankly. <laughs> they are asking Alexa now. Dude, that's so funny. I don't trust anybody. Don't get it twisted. Anybody who's playing this game while not live streaming with a face cam is a snake. I mean, these cinephiles are shameless, bro. You don't have hand cam? Because every time I put my fingers on the camera, people go, why do they look like that? Charlie Day from the Super Mario Brothers movie. Okay, Playmobil the movie. I'm on today. I'm on. That's a plus one right there. Speak. What are we doing here? Keanu Reeves was blocked by my ban. Cast lifeline. <laughs> They're burning everything. They, they're jettisoning ballast from the ship, man. The vessel's going down. Batman 1989. All right, all right, all right. I see where you're going there. I'm going to say Big Eyes via Tim Burton. I think I'm going to take you to the weeds. A lot of people, they take you to a Batman Returns, maybe a Nightmare Before Christmas. Nah, man. We're, we're, we're playing none of the hits, okay? Can you deal with that? Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay, now my ass going to Batman Returns. They know. Paul Rubens, okay. Lots of Paul Rubens plays. They got to skip. I'm going to take you to traffic. I'm going to see what you know about traffic. That doesn't have Paul Rubens in it. Oh, I'm thinking of Blow. <laughs> Benicio Del Toro's in Big Top Pee Wee. I'm, my mind is being blown like 10 different ways with this guess. You skip me on traffic? Okay, my ass is playing Blow then. Benicio Del Toro's not in Blow? Ocean's 11 because of Soderbergh. Okay. No, he's in traffic? He should get a bike then. Right? R slash fuck cars. Bros said Iron Man. He's saying the Avengers for Ocean's Eleven. This has every Hollywood actor of all time in it. <laughs> it turns out it worked, actually. Maybe I shouldn't complain. Okay, Don Cheadle. Pulp Fiction. Quentin Tarantino's... No, okay. Pulp Fiction... I could hit you with a Samuel L. Jackson kill shot. Me personally, I'd rather take you to Saturday Night Fever. 
and then see what you know about John Travolta because we're very comfortable in the Travolta hole. And the escape from Gotti is sky high. You go hairspray, I go, I don't need an escape from Gotti. You need an escape from Gotti. Good game. <laughs> Saw five. Good try. Good try. You want to go? I, I didn't see any Googling, so I think we're good to go again. I'm on a Saw five diet. I see Saw. I eat it. I'm going to plus two you for that one. Which one's Saw 5? Is that the one where they have to blow off their own balls with a rocket launcher? Or is that the one where they have to staple their tongue to the roof of their mouth? Is Saw just jackass now? That would be sick, bro. That would have gone crazy on Mad TV. Jigsaw captures the jackass boys and it puts them in the torture devices, but they're actually like into it. I'm Steve-O, and this is the fucking thing that crushes your head if you take more than 30 seconds to solve a Rubik's Cube thing. <laughs> ah, it fucking, ah, it fucking kills, bro! That would, that would have gone crazy on Mad TV. SNL doesn't have the balls. You ever go to a pub quiz just for the free stuff? I used to go to Trivia Night in university, and we, we would, like, they did four rounds. I would say once every two weeks we'd take a round or two. So we were doing okay. Nowadays, I, I would need a squad. Also, I feel like the, the real downfall of society is that, um, nice, nice try, nice try. You're gonna gotty me? You think I don't have another uh, John Travolta kill shot? How about Speed Kills 2018, brother? I've seen all the John Travolta schlock that's come out. I feel like everything is like constantly on an upward trend towards optimization so like it used to be you would go to trivia night and there would be like a couple of smart people a couple of ringers and then everybody else was mostly just looking to have a couple of drinks and have a good time now i feel like every team would be like hyper competitive like ivy league graduates who are like no i can't drink it's trivia night at the bar it's turbo nerd season at trivia nights now feel sorry for the kids these days, man. They'll never know. The way, way back. The slamming salmon. I can't believe it actually worked. The Huawei back. Remember when um, Huawei sponsored every Canadian television program for like seven years? And then our... Uh, the Five Eyes surveillance agency said, hey, they undermined your communications network from the inside out. <laughs> and then everyone was like, oops. You know, I don't, I, I'm not trying to spread conspiracy theories or misinformation. The narrative is that the Nortel Corporation in Canada got too big for its britches and then got lazy. They got fat and lazy and then they got disrupted, right? Didn't they get their shit zoinked? Is that, I, I heard inklings of that online. Didn't they get um, reverse engineered, corporate espionaged? They did get a little zoinked, but they were probably zooted regardless. Okay. See, I didn't know this because this stuff all happened, um, you know, when I was 12. I just know my dad came home from work one day looking kind of sad. And I was like, bad day at work. And he's like, the Canadian stock market just completely collapsed. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go play like PlayStation 1 in my room why did people let Justin Timberlake have an acting career for a minute listen can I tell you something there was a family feud episode on TV yesterday that I was watching because my daughter had to come home sick from daycare anyway so the family feud episode was on TV it was name the most talented dancer of all time first person buzzed in Fred Astaire Number two answer. Second person buzzed in. Da -da 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 -da. Michael Jackson. Number one answer with one more point than Fred Astaire. They said, we'll play, Steve. You know what they said next? They said, they said Chris Brown, eh, talented dancer. We won't speak about his 
personal history. Number two, I don't even remember who they said. Oh, someone said Selena. And I said, eh, talented artist, okay. I wouldn't think of her as necessarily like one of the most talented dancers of all time. Then the third person said Usher. Eh. Now, me personally, I think Usher had a, had a good chance to be on there. That would have been one of my guesses. Um, but they got X'd on that. The other family said, We're, we got it, we got it, we got it. You know who those mother... After five minutes of colluding and coming up with suggestions, you know who they said? We're going to go with Justin Timberlake. I said, oh, brother. Better dancer than me, for sure. But at no point in my life has I ever been like, this dude's one of the top five dancers in human history. No, it was not on there. One of my guesses was on there, though. Jennifer Lopez. She was number three. Another one was Mikhail Baryshnikov, which nobody in the state in their life where they're going to go on the family feud, which probably tapes at like 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. They're not going to begin Mikhail Baryshnikov, but it does make sense. Who? He's like a, a Soviet ballet dancer. <laughs> this was a Steve Harvey episode. It was like a modern episode. I don't, I don't remember who was fifth, actually. Justin Timberlake, good answer. No, 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 no. Hang on, let me see if my wife is ready to stream. I will say hello. Are you ready to stream? Smiley face. The leftover Korean fried chicken for lunch, yeah! <laughs> kung, 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 kung. He even came with his chains and his crown, yeah! Oh, it reminds me of the door. I watched the door clips so many times, dude. Oh man, I was I was killing myself laughing. I was trying to find the Chibli scream clip. It's the Chibli scream clip is so good. CEO of scrolling. Listen, I'm already self conscious. Okay. You got him, bro. No, oh, he's on me. He's on me. He's got yes! him! Oh, the bracket, the bracket, yes! run! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. The door. I'm sorry. I know this is a little self indulgent here, bro, but the door clip gets me so good. Hang on. I'm just, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Oh, man. <laughs> He's dead, but Justin, Justin also died. Justin. Oh, no. That's what you get for killing my ass. I want ass. it. What the fuck oh, is this? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. I hate this right now. It's so loud. It's the absolute loudest thing in the universe. <laughs> it's so good man it's great too because he's not just opening the door like just to make the sound there's like a, a piece of loot right in the door frame where he's trying to grab it but every time he tries to grab it it just slams the world's loudest door that's comedy man what do you think of abbott and costello Overrated. 90 year olds will be like, check this out. The first time I heard this on the radio, I laughed so hard I fell off my horse. The guy on first base is named who? Oh, and the guy on second base is named what? What a hilarious series of misunderstandings. You would have a heart attack laughing if they came out with like Jackass 1941. It's like, my name's Cornelius Finch and this is the stepping on a rake challenge. Shit would be in the Smithsonian. My name's Cornelius Finch, and this is the stepping on a rake challenge. Bring oh. his, his face pops back out to its normal size. Holy. Thank you. Oh Look God. at this. 
Look at this. Lentil soup and a couple mandu. Thank you. I do have a. I have I got some plates down here. One of the bowls was baked oatmeal this morning. One of the bowls, I had some pineapple spears last night. Two a day for four days. The two, the, the plate was, the, <laughs> the plate was the mandu from yesterday. It's not the eight cans, it's two a day for four days. Am I right? Am I right, Jake? A hundred percent. You know what is crazy, though? I'm not saying this to put my wife on blast. It's nice that sometimes she'll come down and clean my desk. But there are other times when I go up and I walk past her room and I'll see, like, two cans and a plate on her desk. And I'm like, she is taking a shot. She came down and cleaned off my desk to give me a little, like, check yourself before you wreck yourself. But in her own room, she had... <laughs> I only have five, four cans on my desk right now. And it's two a day for two days, okay? I know it smells crazy in there. It kind of does smell crazy in here, but it's not like food waste. It's because I, like, uh, the bike is right here. And then, like, it's literally six inches away from the wall. So I think my sweat like gets stuck on the wall and then just kind of soaks into the drywall. So I think it's probably smells like a, like a piss factory down here sometimes. Then we open the window, we air it out a little bit and then by 5.15 a.m. the next morning, it's good to go, which is great because that's, you know, like an hour before I start riding. Rip your house price? No, that's the great thing is um, there's like way too much demand for houses. So you could, I could just start fucking smashing shit probably. And then I don't think the price gets affected at all. Doesn't make any damn sense. That's an awfully dainty flower sweater painting. All right, I'm going to send you over to my wife's stream. Enjoy yourself, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you for the stream. Top three this year. Let's go! I still like from yesterday. We could have worked on it a little bit more, but we were low on glycogen, and it was a group call. I'm the cum in the box. Da -da 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 Mom has just found it. Da -da 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 Mom just found the cum box. <laughs>